Good morning or afternoon. Uh, this video is for you if you're thinking about making or creating a Catholic altar in your apartment or your home, just to give you some ideas or some of the thought process, I guess, that a Catholic will go through when he's trying to create a space like this. Okay, so uh, originally when I moved in, I've been here for about uh, four or five months now and I haven't had like a permanent, I guess I've been discerning where my prayer space is gonna be, our corner, altar. Uh, about a month after I moved in, I put I had all my statues on top of the shelf. But I think one of the things about an altar or prayer corner is it should call you to prayer and it should be, it shouldn't be like a footnote of wherever it is. It should be very focused and like, for this space, this is what this is. So when I had them here, I can't really say this is like a prayer altar because I had bookshelves, the lamp was there still there so I moved it and I was thinking I need I wanted to find some other uh, space in my place to kind of set up this altar currently I have all my like uh, I'll just show you a quick statues kind of here um, these are like the main bulk of my uh, statues artifacts religious but I was hoping that I could get some kind of altar space here maybe but it's low underneath the stairs and i don't think again i feel like it's going to be kind of off to the corner not a focal point and not really inviting uh, me to pray so the goal for this morning is to create take this space and which has my saint joseph statue there already chair in that bowl there's all my lovely rosary rosary collection um but you know to be honest i don't feel called to come sit in the morning and pray maybe because it's just not again it's not calling me to prayer it's not um helping me be intentional so i'm about to meet someone that i found off facebook marketplace where i found i think a pretty cool altar uh cabinet that i'm going to use for this space so i'm going to go meet him come back i'll bring it up here and then we'll get going so I got it up here. I live on the third floor. So this was a task to carry this up here. I got so sweaty. I had to change my shirt. So before we continue, coffee break. Do you ever feel sometimes happiness is just a coffee cup away? Black, no sugar. How do you take yours? So this is it, it made it up uh, by the grace of God. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me to carry this up three flights of stairs. Um, yeah, so this is, I've, I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I will be honest, I'm not a fan of buying anything new. Uh, you should always try and save money, buy used, especially stuff like this. I, I think, you know, if you're thinking about creating an altar space in your home, don't go to Ikea and buy like a, a basic shelf uh, plain Jane. Look for something that has character. I, uh, it's a, it is old. You can tell by looking at it, looking at it the way it's built. Um, it's an antique. The wood is pretty good quality. Um, pretty sturdy. I don't know how old it is, but it is old. Probably just a couple decades old. I paid 60 bucks for it, which is good. Good for me. I don't think I'll use, I could put books in here or other maybe prayer materials, but there's gonna be like a chair in front of this, so I'm not sure I'll have space to open it. I'm more concerned with just having something that I can put, you know, all my prayer um, materials, statues, and something that is like not, I wanted something that wasn't table height. So table height is probably 29, 30 inches. I wanted something a little taller. This is 35 inches, so I think it's perfect. It's vintage, it looks old. I'm a fan of old vintage stuff. The, uh, this chest I have here that my TV sits on, it's like an everywhere chest. It's probably 100 years old from the 1920s. This is what people would take like on cargo if they were traveling or moving. They would just pack everything in a chest like this on a ship or plane. It's pretty sturdy. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Before we get started, just a quick reminder about um, statues and images in your home. 
because I know there are some Protestants or uh, non-denominational people who are gonna comment on here, you know, you're going to hell, or you're worshiping graven images. This is a picture of my father and my mother. And this is me when I got, got confirmed, I guess I was in high school, many moons ago. Um, but you know, my, so my mother has passed away. Unfortunately, she passed away about a year and a half ago to COVID. And obviously I like this picture. I, like, I keep it around um, so I can look at it and see her and remember her and remember that she loved me and that I loved her. And this is just, this is, God, this is my mother. So even though I have this image, right, of something other than God or whatever in my house, I know this isn't my mother, right? I know this is just a way to help me remember her, help me think about her. So in the same way, when we have images or statues, like this is a statue of St. Joseph, I know this statue isn't St. Joseph. It's not something like, uh, you know, we are, I think other people think that the statues or the images we have, we think that that's actually like we're giving worship or we're, um, you know, praying to the statue, which is not correct. It's that all these things help us remember, right? I never walk the earth with Jesus, Mary, or any of the saints, right? But I know that in faith, Jesus existed, Mary existed, Joseph existed, the lives of the saints, all those people really existed, but I never met them. So this is a way for us to remind ourselves that they really existed and to kind of remember their life. And more to the point, all the saints, the angels and the saints, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, all the saints, it's just our family. In the same way, like this is my family. I love them, I remember them. Um, I choose to have a reminder of who they are uh, to me. It's the same way with images or statues. All these things are reminders. We're not worshiping them. Um, we're choosing to have a reminder in our home so that we can be drawn in to prayer. I mean, if you look at a prayer, if you look at a statue or picture of Jesus, the picture of the statue is not Jesus, right? Obviously, but it will help you in your mind think about him. Especially if you're looking at a crucifix, right? If you have a crucifix in your home, what are you doing? You're looking at it to hopefully be drawn into the mystery of his death and passion on the cross. So Catholics, be not afraid, litter your house, your space, your apartment, whatever with holy things. My goal is, you know, because we're always under temptation, the devil never sleeps. If he's gonna tempt you, make it difficult for him, right? Litter your house with holy things, artifacts, uh, statues, so that he takes a beating if he's gonna tempt you. And it's just, all, I mean, the saints and exorcists say, the devil hates looking at, especially crucifixes, holy things, he can't stand it. So uh, Catholics, be not afraid. Okay, so this is the finished product. I think it came out good, it looks better than before. As I said before, I actually had it, I had just statues over here, maybe a month after I moved in, but it wasn't an intentional prayer corner. I feel like, it, you know, sharing the space with the books and just kind of more, uh, you know, not really encouraging me to pray, but I feel like this is a better uh, set up here. I'm gonna put a chair right here. But uh, yeah, I like the way it came out. This wooden cabinet antique definitely looks good. Makes everything look good. I think when you're trying to create an altar, anything older is always better. Gives it more character. Um, don't go to Ikea and buy a basic shelf. Just a little, maybe close up on these statues. Uh, this is the Sacred Heart of Jesus statue I bought at an antique shop. Whenever I am looking for statues or deciding on one, the, f the detail is always something that gets me. This one was very uh, beautiful and detailed. St. Joseph statue, this Mary statue, and this Mary statue all came in a shipment that I bought at an auction online. And I guess whoever shipped them out hated Catholic sacramentals or didn't believe in them because they came none of them are wrapped up no shrink wrap no bubble wrap they just all came uh in a box like that and of course they all bounced around and broke and 
I almost thought, man, how I should just get rid of these because they're so damaged. But then a friend of mine was like, you know, you should try to put them back together. So I did, like, a lot of this base was just gone. I had to painstakingly glue a piece, wait for it to dry, then glue a piece, wait for it to dry, and eventually I could put uh, him back on the base. His head was totally off. Face of Jesus was damaged. So I did the best that I could. Um, same thing with Mary, a little more miraculous though, because her head was perfectly fine. Of course, you know, uh, no coincidence there. Most of her statue, her hands were broken off, but other than that, most of it was intact. There's some scratches here. Um, I think same thing with Mary's statue here. It was attached from the base, but that's pretty much it. Nothing. Uh... So I'm glad that I ended up keeping those and repairing them because now they're like a, a little testimony in themselves. Just some other statues. This is my mom's. Uh, I love the Pieta. I always wanted one of good size. This one I found at an online auction. So I think the only damage is her hand. You could tell it was glued back on, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. Good size, I love it. Some Franciscans. And then I just put like a little bowl here for rosaries if I want to pick them up pray. So yeah. Let's uh, put the chair back and see how it looks. So again, I like the way it came out. Um, if you're thinking about creating a Catholic altar prayer corner in your home, apartment, room, go for it. Uh, go big. And I can definitely envision, uh, again, I think it just looks, when you're looking at your own space, and it's more pleasing to the eye. I feel like it just, there's something about, you know, order, neatness. I feel like the Catholic faith in general is very ordered. Like I feel like, cause I'm a Roman Catholic, I love order. Like I love things that fit. This just fits more for me. Um, now when I come into my apartment, I'm gonna be more like, I don't know, happy, right? To see something more pleasing. Uh, definitely pleasing. So I can definitely, again, see myself coming here to pray and be, again, help my spiritual life. Um, uh, I, so again, I had the table there before where I could put a coffee, you know, I could put a cup of coffee, but now I'm gonna have to just put it on my table, TV table there if I wanna have coffee. But overall, I think it came out great. Um, go for it, create your uh, prayer space, or if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, let me know, and if I can just give you any word of encouragement, if you made it to the end of this video, uh, do what God is calling you to do. Like he's given you a gift, he's given you a charism, something that the world needs, um, that the church needs. And there's so many, you know, voices. There's so many distractions in the world today, but really like we just need to listen to God's voice. Like that's really all we need. There's so many things that the world tells us we need that we don't actually need. What our heart needs, what our soul needs, um, to be fulfilled is just Jesus Christ. Like that's it and doing his will. So if you're doing his will with the gifts that he's given you, man, you're gonna be so happy. You're gonna be on fire and everyone is gonna see it. And like, you're just, it's just gonna be, your life's gonna be awesome. I feel like, I feel like I'm there right now. Hopefully it stays, but I just feel so happy. Like I feel so happy to just be and it's such a blessing um, or in my life right now. So. God bless you. I hope you have a great day, great week, and I'll see you next time.